yarnivores and spiderettes, Fiber Spider back again with another crochet tutorial just for you. And today I have got a really lovely piece in, yes, the granny stitch. You know I love the granny stitch. This shawl is called the swoop shawl because it has a lovely swoop to it along the top edge, which is right there. And it is self-edging and it starts at a point and then it goes to a point and the increasing and decreasing makes such a beautiful swooping shape. It's sort of like a boomerang shawl or a crescent shawl in its formation, but I just, I love the shape. I love its simplicity. And this is actually a pattern that I came up with myself that was inspired by a knitting pattern, uh, also of the same shape, but I thought, can I do this in grannies? And sure enough, I was able to figure it out. Yay for me and yay for you guys so I could share it with you. Now, I love this yarn. It is so fuzzy wuzzy, as you can probably make out, and the colors are gorgeous. And because this pattern is worked with the, the granny type stitch, this yarn was perfect because you don't have to work into stitches, you're working into stitch spaces. So if you've got a fuzzy yarn, this is perfect for that. And it is, do to do, Red Hearts Unforgettable. And this was the colorway of Echo, 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 Echo. <laughs> and uh, I used about three of these. It is absolutely gorgeous, as you can see. A little bit on the pricey side for my personal taste, but this worked out perfectly. Now, for today's example, I'm going to be using some pre-balled yarn here. This is actually Pastry Puff by Hirschner's. By the way, not sponsored by either brand whatsoever. Um, this one I got at my local Michael store. Like I said, it's a little bit pricey. I want to say it's like 4 or $5 a skein. Um, this... Uh, this was actually given to me by one of my viewers. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. I appreciate. And so, also, one last thing. Do, 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 do. I used a size I, 5.5 millimeter hook. You can, of course, use whatever works best for you. I'm just letting you know what I used so that if you want to duplicate the results, you can. So, without further ado, let's get started. Okie dokie pokey. So I've got my size eye hook and I've got my yarn. It's it's basically a worsted weight yarn. And so we're going to start with our slip knot and our beginning foundation. Now, after that, it is essentially a two row repeat. Ah! Do you, don't you just love it? Simplicity is the word of the day. So we're going to start by doing our initial chain, which is what we're going to be working into. Then, after the initial chain, we need four more chains for a total of five chains. So, two, and three, four, and five. All right, then, into that first chain, focus, into the first chain, we need three doubles, three double crochets. So, we've got one, and two, and three. Then to finish off this row, chain two. Now I know this is going to sound weird right now, but it'll make sense later. I'm going to chain two and then do a treble crochet into that same stitch, that same space. Through two, through two, and through two because this is going to be our increasing side and this is going to be our decreasing side. You'll see what I mean as we go on. Alrighty. Also, you can then cinch this and you can sew in your end at any given time and we will continue on to the next row. Alrighty, so for the second row, I'm going to start by chaining up six. One, two, three, four, five, and six, which is going to count as our treble crochet and chain two space. Turn the work, 
Now into the chain two space, we need three doubles. And two, three, chain one, and three more doubles into that same space. So one, and two, and three. So like I said, this is the increase side. Over here, we have the decrease side. So into that decrease side loop, yarn over twice for a treble crochet into that space. And that's one of the things that I love about this pattern is that we're never going into stitches, we're going into stitch spaces, which makes things a lot easier. All right, so we will go on to the third row. All righty, so for the third row, start by chaining up four, one, two, three, and four, turn the work, and we're going to skip this space right here, and we're gonna go directly into this chain one space right here with three doubles. One, two, three, chain one, and then into this chain two space with our treble, and then the chain two space into that space, three doubles, chain one, three doubles, two, and three, chain one, three doubles, one, two, three, chain two, and a treble crochet also into the space. So yarning over twice, going into that same space, and make our treble. All right, so that is the end of the third row. So as you can see, this here is going to be the top edge, the, the neckline, if you will. And over here is where we're going to be doing our decreasing, and then on this side is where we're going to be doing our increasing. So it's going to keep growing out like so. All right. And the beauty of it is that for every increase, we're doing a decrease, but it's shifting, and that's creating the swoop. So I'm going to do a couple more rows so that you get used to the idea because you know I like to be thorough, but really what it amounts to is we're increasing on the one side and decreasing on the other side. And then on the following row, we're starting with the decrease and then we're doing the increase at the end. So it's just a, a flippy floppy back and forth kind of thing. But I'm going to do a couple of rows for you just so I am positive that you guys get it. All right, so we shall continue. Alrighty, so since we're on the increase side, I'm going to start by chaining up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Turn the work and into the chain two space. Three doubles. And three, chain one, three more doubles, all right, so we have our increase, then at the end we need our decrease, so moving right along, chain one, into the next chain one space, three doubles, Okay, chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space. There we go. And then we've reached the end of the road. 
So when you reach that last space, don't do any chains, just do a treble crochet into that last space. And a treble crochet is the equivalent to a chain four, which is what we're going to do on the next row. So because we're on the decrease side, we start by chaining up four, one, two, three, four, turn the work, skipping this first space, going directly into the next one with three doubles, one, and two, and three, chain one, three doubles into the next space. Now, by all means, I encourage you to fiddle around with the pattern because it took me quite a bit of fiddling myself in order to get this, you know, experimenting with, you know, doing, you know, three chains, five chains, you know, et cetera, et cetera, to get it to where I thought it had a nice flow to it. So we did our three doubles, chain one, into the next chain one space, three doubles, All righty, chain one, and then into the last space, three doubles, chain one, three doubles, chain two, and a treble. But I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it for you, of course. You know, so we got three doubles, two, and three, chain one, three more doubles, one. And two, and three, chain two, then do a treble into that same stitch. Because I found that by doing doubles instead of trebles, it was making the work pucker a bit much. And that, no, no, I, I was not having it. I'm like, if I can do something about it, I'm going to do something about it. So I found that using the, the chain fours on the one side and the trebles on the other side, it really helped it to lay the way that I wanted it to. All right. So as you can see, the, the neckline is starting to swoop more and the base is starting to have sort of a, a swooshy boomerang type shape you know, a crescent moon, if you will. All right, so, you know, let's do a little bit more and, uh, you know, take it from there. All righty. All righty, so again, since we are on the increase row, and you can always tell because it's like, yep, we have our two in the same space. So since we're on the increase row, I'm going to start by chaining up six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Turn the work into the chain two space, three doubles, one and two and three, chain one, three more doubles into that same space, and two and three. Three, so we've got our increase, chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space. And also, yes, I know I am totally partial because I love the granny stitch. It's just, it's, it's my, my staple. It's like potatoes. I am Irish. Um, <laughs> chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space. Chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space. And also I really wanted a pattern where I wouldn't have to agonize over, you know, a repeat that just kept going on and on and on. Now, I mean, this, this is very easy to pick up and put down and know exactly where you left off. It's for what I call mindful stitching. All right, so we've reached the very end of the row because we only have one space left. So going in with a treble crochet into that space, 
like so. Chain four, because this is the decrease side, so scooting right along to this next chain one space with three doubles. One, and two, and three. And also, I know that I have done a number of shawls in this particular shape, but it's just a little bit different, you know, and the variations sometimes are appealing, you know, sometimes a bit more interesting, so I thought I'd give it a try, you know, let me know what you think. So I did my three doubles, chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space. I always try to come up with new things for you guys, I'm trying to keep it fresh. All right. Chain one, three doubles into the next space. Oops, I lost my stitch. All right, so I got my three doubles. Chain one, three into the next space. There we go. Chain one three into the next space. Now, another variation that you could quite conceivably do is instead of doing chain one spaces in between, you could omit those if you want it to be a bit closer together. I imagine that would work too. However, when you're doing your increases, the three doubles, chain one, three doubles, I would leave the chain in there so that you can see, oh yes, I have to work in between there. All right, so nearly at the end, chain one, and into this last chain two space, three doubles. Chain one, three doubles, chain two, and treble crochet through two, through two, through two. Ta-da! And that is how you make the swoop shawl. And I love it. And also, I mean, you can't really see any change with this particular yarn yet, because, you know, the, the point, it started here, and it just keeps going down this way. As you keep going, it'll show all of the gradients, and so on and so forth. This also, this, this piece would work out lovely with shawl and a ball. I haven't used that for a very long time, because, personally, I find it very aggravating to work with, but it's gorgeous. But with this particular pattern, because you're working into the stitch spaces, not into the actual stitches, that yarn would be perfect for this. Absolutely perfect. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, you know, just keep on doing the increase row and the decrease row. You know, I mean, technically you have an increase and a decrease for every row, but see right here, you would be starting with an increase. So you'd be chaining up six, working your way down to, you know, the other side where you would decrease and then just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it's just those two rows over and over and over. And you can end on either row, you know, the crochet police are not going to come after you. Either or is fine. And you just keep going until you run out of yarn or if it's as big as you want. This would also make a really lovely neck scarf, you know, if you don't want to do a full sized shawl. At any rate, I really hope that you liked it. And if you did, give me a little thumbs up button down below because I appreciate your appreciation and your support. And if you want to show even more support, just between you and me, do me a little favor. Next time you see an ad that pops up on one of my videos, don't hit skip. Let it play through. You know, be a little bit patient. Let it play through. And that way I can really, you know, Make the most of your support through monetization. It really does make a difference, believe it or not. Also, please hit subscribe uh, for more videos because I do try to post as often as I can, whether it's knitting or crocheting or audiobook narration. And also, 
please visit my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games, where I do video game playthrough and cute little commentary. It's a lot of fun, and I'd like to see you there too. So, until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.